Good afternoon ladies and mostly gentlemen of YouTube, Chuggy2009, and uh, tonight we're going to be spark testing some stuff. So, uh, you know, I've gone ahead and scavenged a farm in the shop and acquired various types of metals. I got the little whiteboard set up, I got my favorite five gallon teaching bucket here, and uh, so let's begin. Alright, uh, what is spark testing? Basically, it's when you take a material of an unknown composition, uh, for example these channel locks, they're generic equivalent, and uh, you take this, get yourself an angle grinder like this here four and a half inch Milwaukee, and uh, you start grinding on whatever it is you got, and just from the stream of sparks that's going to shoot off, you'll be able to tell a lot about the composition of the base metal of whatever you're working with. So uh, this is designed to be a basic crash course in metallurgy and spark testing and differentiating different types of base metals. Uh, it's, I'm sure I could sit here literally for hours and go on about metallurgy and uh, even spark testing a little bit, but I'm not going to do that, at least tonight. Uh, what we are going to do tonight is talk about steel and three different kinds of cast iron. Not just any steel, we're going to be talking about low carbon steel, high carbon steel, tool steel, and cast steel. And uh, so, let's get started. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so first off, steel. Uh, steel is going to be by far the most common thing that you'll probably ever run into welding unless you do some specialty aluminum or okay we're not going to get into that in this video but uh, basically before we even get into the spark testing part of this a somewhat sure way to tell if something is steel is to just look at it if it appears to be sheet metal and a magnet sticks to it and uh, then it's well probably steel if it appears to be plate it's probably steel if it appears to be a smaller structural shape, such as this piece of 3 inch square tube with an 8 inch wall thickness, it's probably steel. Cast iron, as the name implies, is usually cast. It'll be cast into a shape like an engine block or a transmission housing, something along those lines. If it's a generic shape like these, uh, in which it's intended that you get this and cut it up into whatever section you need and weld that together, it is probably going to be steel. I'm sure somewhere out in the world, I don't doubt it, there's going to be structural shapes that are cast iron, probably going to be like a large square tube, large channel, something along those lines, but overall, if it's a structural shape, probably going to be steel. Now let's talk about spark testing steel. Well, it's going to have a lot of sparks, and the more sparks it has, the more carbon content it's going to have, and uh, yeah, the sparks are going to be white colored. Uh, let's talk about carbon content. Uh, if you take a piece of material with a low carbon content and a high carbon content and, uh, and you just bend them over something, the material with the lower carbon content is going to bend and the higher carbon content is going to just break. That's why, in a nutshell, cast iron is so difficult to weld. When you weld steel, you know, the heat pulls it various different ways as it heats and uh, contracts and shrinks and cools and all the steel can kind of bend with that, but cast iron, because it's not as ductile, it has a lot more carbon in it than your average steel, it's just going to snap. I mean, <laughs> it's just it's going to crack something along those lines. So uh, carbon content is probably the main thing that determines weldability in pretty much anything. Alright, moving on, I guess we should just spark test this stuff. So this is going to be low carbon steel. Now as you can see, I've dimmed the lights in here so that hopefully these sparks will show up a little bit better on camera. Now this is going to be the test which off of which we base our comparisons to every other kind of metal here. So let's do it. Like I said, those sparks were bright in color and large in number, so that's your low carbon steel. Let's talk about something with a little bit higher carbon content, such as the, uh, the tool steel found in these fine generic channel locks. So there you go. As you notice, the difference between uh, mild steel and tool steel, the difference in color is not a whole lot different. But with more carbon content comes more flare into sparks. With the mild steel, uh, you know, an individual spark would be just kind of like a straight shooter, just go just flying across. Whereas with the tool steel, it looked like it fizzled a little bit, it branched out, it uh, sparkled, it uh, more flare. That's what I'm trying to say. Tool steel, the more carbon content you have, 
the more flare you're gonna have. Now let's play that back with like a uh, with like a top view, and you'll see exactly what I mean. All right, next up, let's talk about cast steel. Now what we have here is part of a John Deere cultivator, and I still have this because it was the first ever thing I welded back into one piece. Uh, I actually cut it to weld it, it's kind of counterproductive, but in the summer of 2009, this became the first thing that I ever welded. Just felt the need to share that with everyone. Alright, yeah, right, that's uh, cast steel. Not a lot different than regular carbon steel. It's basically just poured into a mold to look like whatever the heck you need it to look like versus a piece of plate, angle, or, uh, you know, square tubing. There's going to be a little bit higher carbon content in this than in your average structural steel. However, in most circumstances, it won't require a preheat or any special precautions. You can just weld this with, uh, with plain old 7018, just like I did. Not well, but still. Alright, spark test this. So there you go. Cast steel, not a whole lot different than regular old uh, mild steel, just a little bit darker, a little bit yellowish color, a little bit more of a yellowish color you could say, and a little bit more flare in those sparks, not as much as, uh, not as much flare as our tool steel had. So uh, basically those are three kinds of steel. We got our mild steel, we got our high carbon steel, which is going to be, for what we're doing out here tonight, one and the same with our tool steel. And then of course we have our cast steel. Next up, cast iron. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so the first kind of cast iron we're going to talk about is gray cast iron. Now when we spark test this, it's going to give off sparks that are more of a red color right at the grinding disc. And then as they shoot out, they'll become more of a, uh, more of a yellowish color. You can see what I mean here. And uh, there's going to be a much lower spark volume than our good old friend mild steel here has. Now gray cast iron, it's interesting because it's a softer metal but it's still pretty brittle. I like to think of it kind of like styrofoam. You know, picture like a styrofoam cup or something. You can dig your fingernail into it pretty easily but if you just try to bend it over itself, it's not going to do that. It's just going to snap. And uh, you may be wondering why. And well, well, with the cast iron, I don't know about the styrofoam. Basically, when they make a part out of gray cast iron, you know, they pour it into a mold or whatever. And then the important part is they give it a longer time to cool. They, it's pretty much the same concept as if you weld something cast iron with a high carbon content and you give it a post heat or you bury it in sand to increase the amount of time it takes from being hot as in freshly welded or freshly formed to room temperature, you know, cool. You do, they do what they can to limit the, the temperature shock, I guess you could say. And uh, because of this, it's a softer material because it's allowed to cool slower, but it's still pretty brittle. It has a very low ductility because, well, it's cast iron. So, alright, let's spark test it. See what I mean about the lower spark volume? I mean, it should, it's a fraction of the sparkage that a uh, good old low carbon steel throws off. Now, because of everything I just said, I would never really recommend welding this stuff with 7018, but I did weld this actual vise <laughs> with 7018, and as you can see, it held. And uh, being the gray cast iron is not one of the easier kinds of cast to weld. That was something of a miracle, but. If anyone's thought about welding cast iron with 7018, I did make a video on it when I made when I fixed this up, and I'll just put that in the description or whatever. So you know, if you get time, maybe you can watch it. Anyway, next up, white cast iron. White cast iron is very similar to gray cast iron. Uh, the main difference being back in the manufacturing process. Uh, basically, everything I told you all about with the gray cast iron about how it's cooled slowly and all that, uh, it just doesn't really happen with the white cast iron. That's the main difference. It's not like they pour it and then just dunk it in water or something. I don't know, maybe they do. That's, that's outside my area of expertise, or whatever the heck you call this. Anyway, uh, it is cooled faster, thus it has a higher carbon content, it's going to be more brittle, 
and uh, it's going to be less ductile, which means it's going to be even harder to weld than gray cast iron. Oh yeah! Alright, uh, basically when you spark test it, because like I said, they are a lot alike, it can be kind of hard to tell them apart. The main difference is there's going to be even less sparks with white cast iron uh, than there are with gray. Let's do it. So that, in all of its awesomeness, is white cast iron. Now as you can see, the sparks are honestly not that different. I mean, because gray cast iron and white cast iron are, except for the way they're cooled, pretty much the same kind of iron. The main difference and the main thing you have to look at is the flare of the sparks. With the gray cast iron, comparatively to the white cast iron, of course, the sparks are more of a straight shooter effect versus the white cast in which they, they fizzle, they break apart like a 4th of July, some kind of illegal firework, and uh, they just, even though there's a smaller volume of sparks because of the flare, it looks like there's a larger volume of sparks. Have a good look at this. See what I mean? So uh, a lot more flare to the white cast iron because like I said, just the uh, the way it's cooled, it derives a higher carbon content than its gray cast cousin. And I guess that leaves us to malleable iron. Now malleable iron is going to be the most steel-like material that we test out here tonight. And uh, it's going to be more of a yellowish color than either of these two. These, are, these two are comparatively going to be a lot more dark red. This is going to be more of a yellowish color, like a straw yellow some people would call it. And it's going to have a much higher volume of sparks than gray and white cast iron, and it honestly looks somewhat like regular carbon steel or a high carbon steel. It's uh, It can be kind of difficult to tell apart, and I guess I just might as well show you guys. This has been your basic lesson in spark testing with Stretch, myself, and um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. I've greatly enjoyed producing it for reasons I don't fully understand, but I've had a blast out here, and uh, hopefully this video helps you. Hopefully next time somebody brings you something and you're like, can you weld this for me? And uh, you're like, how the hell did you break that? Now I mean, you're like, maybe let me do a quick little spark test on this and see what I can do for you. You know, hopefully it'll help you figure out what exactly you have to work with. Now let's talk for a minute about welding cast iron. Uh, it's something that I've tried and miraculously succeeded at, more so than I usually do with women. But anyway, uh, basically, I have plans to produce a lot more cast iron welding videos. It's something I really want to practice at, get good at. It's something that not a lot of people are willing to do. And uh, so, uh, for obvious reasons, if you can do that, that's going to be a good thing for you. And that's the main reason I want to learn how to weld cast iron. Anyway, if you guys have any suggestions on cast welding videos, any methods you'd like me to try, anything along those lines, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Like I said, I've had a blast making it. And uh, so, big thank you to, for you to watching, for you for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. Have a nice night, everybody. Yeehaw.